When it comes to generating large amounts of heat, the chemist instrument of choice is the Bunsen burner. And that's the device that you see right here. Lighting a Bunsen burner can be a little bit tricky when you're first starting out. So the purpose of this video is just to show you a good technique that works pretty much every time for lighting your Bunsen burner. The first step of this technique is to make sure that everything is hooked up, first of all. So you should have a relatively flexible gas tubing that connects the inlet of your Bunsen burner right here to the gas tap on your bench, which is the one that has the blue um, spout there. After it's all connected up, make sure that all of the valves and things are closed. So there are two important valves on this device. One is along the neck. You'll notice that there's some threading here, and you can twist this to the right so that the sort of lighter metal part is all the way down flush with the base. On the base, at the very bottom, you'll also notice another valve that kind of looks like a sprinkler head, and make sure this is turned all the way to the right so that it's completely off. At this point, no gas can flow through this device because this bottom valve is completely closed off. In general, about one turn around this bottom valve is going to get you a good gas flow. So go ahead and turn this about a full turn, and you'll notice that the black mark has come back around, so we've rotated that about 360 degrees. That controls the flow of gas through the inlet. The valve at the top controls the amount of oxygen that ends up in the final flame mixture. And we want this about halfway up. So we'll unscrew this until we get the lighter metal part about halfway up the threading. About there looks pretty good. So at this point, with a full turn on the bottom and halfway up on this upper valve, we're ready to light the Bunsen burner. So the first thing to do when lighting a Bunsen burner is to turn the gas on. You should hear a very faint hissing sound. This may be difficult to hear on the video, but I can very lightly hear a hissing sound there. And you'll take the striker, and what the striker is is basically a piece of flint across which uh, metal moves, creating a spark, like so. And we're just going to light the spark over top of the Bunsen burner, and boom, the flame has been created. Now, what you're looking for in the flame is two distinct parts. You'll notice a blue outer flame and sort of a lighter blue inner flame. And that inner cone is the hottest part of the flame, and so you want to make sure that that inner cone is very clear. The easiest way to adjust the inner cone, if you're happy with the flame height, is to use the upper valve. Tightening up the valve decreases the amount of oxygen, and it's going to get you a more yellow flame. Loosening the valve is going to increase the amount of oxygen and potentially tighten up that cone. So you'll notice that the cone has now gotten tighter now that I've opened the oxygen a little bit. So this is about where you want it. This is perfect. The hottest part of the flame is right there at that inner cone, and it's blue along the outside. If you see flickers of orange, that's an indicator that you need to open this bottom valve a little bit more. And if the inner cone is too big for your liking, then you also need to open that valve. If the inner cone is too small, close the valve up so that the proportion of gas is a little bit larger coming through the Bunsen burner. To turn off the Bunsen burner, all you need to do is turn the gas off. And once you've got your valves in a place that you like, again about a full turn on the bottom and about halfway up on the neck, then you can leave it this way and simply connect it up, turn the gas on, and light with the striker in future laps.